What's up, internet? Marami nang tatanong kung bibili sila ng computer, kung kailan rin nila bumili ng AVR or ng UPS. So, naisip namin na sama na rin siya sa how to buy basic PC parts. Kung naghahanap ka ng legit Windows 10 Pro CD key, may special promo ngayon ng CD key offers for Black Friday. Mura na sila dati, mas mura pa sila ngayon. And may dagdag 20% discount if you use our promo code. Add to cart, check out, daan ka sa payment options nila, wala pa isang minuto, finished. May legit working CD key ka na sa software na pinili mo. Gamitin ang aming promo code para makakuha pa ng extra 20% discount sa purchase mo. Kung naghanap ka ng mura, legit, and original software, check out cdkoffers.com. Una, yung AVR or yung Automatic Voltage Regulator. Ano ba yung AVR? In the ideal world, yung transmission ng power malinis. What we mean by clean here is that very defined yung transmission frequency ng power. Kumbaga, if you were to graph it, the wave would be very gentle, very defined. So, hindi siya masyado mataas, hindi siya masyado mababa. Tapos yung amplitude niya or yung height ng wave, consistent. That's the ideal situation, pero hindi siya ganun in real life. Especially sa atin na medyo luma na yung electricity grid, maraming interference sa transmission lines, uh, both natural and man-made. Ang daming factors na nagdadagdag ng noise or basically that pollutes the transmission of the power. Kaya hindi na malinis yung power signal pagdating sa bahay mo, pagdating sa computer mo. In the real world, especially nga sa atin, imbis na very gentle yung wave if you were to graph the frequency of power transmission, very jagged siya. Ito yung tinatawag na noisy signal. Mataas yung peak, mababa yung valley. And so instead of having a gentle, very easily defined graph or of up and down, you usually have something na mukhang mas lie detector test. Alam mo nakita sa mga movies na nagsisinungaling yung bida or yung kontrabida or whoever naka hook up dun sa polygraph or lie detector test. Usually pagan ganun yung graph, parang ganun. Very high, very low very erratic. That's how a noisy power signal looks like and most likely, ganun rin yung power signal na pumapasok sa bahay mo or sa computer mo. Kasi yun nga, medyo luma na yung electricity grid natin. Yung trabaho ni AVR is to smooth out the power entering from the main line. Since it automatically regulates the voltage, kaya nga siya AVR, imbis na sobrang taas or sobrang baba yung pumapasok na voltage, the AVR restricts it to a defined range. Hanggang dito ka lang or hanggang dito ka lang. So at least, mas malinis na yung power signal na pumapasok dun sa computer mo. Di siya ganun kataas, di siya ganun kababa. The AVR automatically regulates the voltage. So, kailangan mo ba talaga tong AVR kung may computer ka? For the short term, wag ka matakot. Pwede mo gamitin yung computer kahit walang AVR. Saksak mo yan diretso sa wall outlet. In fact, dito sa Hardware Sugar, wala kaming computer na nakasaksak sa AVR. Yung test bench namin, yung dalawang staff computers namin, direct to the main. In the short term, we are not afraid that, you know, this will cause any damage. In conjunction to this, may nagtatanong, paano kung may nagpa-flicker or... I'm sure na na ramdaman or napansin mo na dati na nagko-computer ka, biglang yung ilaw mo magfi-flicker pero on pa naman yung computer mo tuloy-tuloy. That's no problem, your PSU can handle it. Walang nasisira sa loob ng computer mo, hindi nasisira yung PSU mo. Kung ganun lang yung experience mo na briefly magfi-flicker yung ilaw pero naka-on pa rin naman yung computer, hindi naman matay yung computer, that's fine. You don't need an AVR to protect you against anything there. Nothing is being destroyed sa computer mo. Iniisip kasi nung iba na yung flickering of the lights indicates na erratic nga yung power supply tapos may nasisira sa loob ng PSU, yung capacitors or yung ibang components niya. Kung baga over time, masisira siya or the quality becomes degraded. But the PSU can handle it. It's fine. You're not sacrificing your component's quality over time if you are experiencing things like that. So for short-term use, you don't need an AVR. Let's say, kakabili mo lang ng rig, excited ka, gusto mo na gamitin, pero walang AVR sa bahay. Walang problema, saksak mo na yan diretso sa wall outlet, tapos mag-download ka na, maglaro ka na. Enjoy your computer. For the long term, do you need an AVR? There is some protection to using AVRs because they can protect the PSU against damage na ordinarily masisira na yung PSU. Yung usual scenario dito kung may lightning strike na alam naman sa atin, mabagyo, medyo madalas yung kidlat. So may lightning strike, it will flow through the electric wires and into your house and into your computer. 
may chance, may possibility na may sasabog sa loob ng PSU mo. Usually, that's the MOV or the Metal Oxide Barristor. And once the MOV blows, hindi mo na magamit yung PSU mo. Effectively, dead na siya. Kung may AVR ka, usually yung AVR may surge protection. So it protects you from sudden surges in the current, which is what happens uh, in lightning strikes. In that scenario, kung may AVR sana yung system na yun, hindi po putok yung MOV ng PSU because maa-absorb ng AVR yung surge. And for surge protection, you actually don't need an AVR. You can buy dedicated surge protection units. They look like heavy-duty extension cables or power strips. And these provide the same protection as an AVR. There are some other added small benefits to using an AVR, like it does remove EMI or RFI interference from hardware that are connected to the same circuit. Tsaka, usually, mas maraming sockets yung AVR. And for a full system, you know that usually kailangan mo nung at least mga four sockets for the monitor, for the system, for the printer, for the Wi-Fi router. So and dami mga peripherals or accessories na kasama sa computer. And usually you want all of those plugged into the AVR. So the AVR doubles up as a power strip. Chaka yung AVR usually may step down transformer yun. So from 220 volt, may mga ibang saksakan sa kanya na 110 volt. Usually, most of the appliances now actually are dual volt. Yung mga cell phones natin, yung mga computer, dual volt yan. Medyo throwback tong socket ng 110 to a time na masela ni mga appliances, like yung mga consoles. Dati, bili ka ng console abroad, 110 yun. Pagbalik mo dito, 220, saksak mo yung 110 sa 220 outlet, wala na, GG na yan. But over time, manufacturers have gotten better and most appliances, computers nowadays, are dual volt. Pero medyo, at least for me, parang security blanket lang na, oh, at least itong AVR na to, may dalawang saksaka ng 110. Just in case you do come across that one odd appliance na di siya dual volt, na kailangan mo talaga isaksak sa 110, the AVR is useful for that. So let's say gusto mo bumili ng AVR, either because di ka naniniwala sa payo ko na hindi naman talaga siya ganun kakailangan, or or you do want that extra surge protection, or the or you want to clean up your power signal, or get bet or remove the EMI or RFI interference. What do you need to look out for in buying AVR? Usually one is to one yan. Yung capacity ng AVR dapat equal dun sa kailangan ng mga components na sinasaksak mo. So let's say you have a computer, 550 watt power supply, you have a monitor, let's say that's 50 watts, and you add a printer and things like that. Basically, you add all of the wattage requirements that you have for all of the components na nakasaksak dun sa AVR. Tapos yung capacity ng AVR dapat equal to or greater than the total requirements of the components that are plugged in. Tapos interestingly enough, dun sa research ko for this video, may nakita akong isang scenario na nag-shutdown yung computer mag-isa while playing games. And the user was able to trace it back kasi yung AVR niya, hindi niya kaya yung power requirements ng computer niya. Sinaksak niya yung computer niya diretso sa wall outlet, wala nang problema, hindi na nagka-crash yung computer. I've never experienced this before, whether myself or customer builds from the shop. Pero yun nga, based dito sa reported experience ng users sa internet, it is possible na makapos yung power na pumapasok sa system mo kasi hindi na kaya i-output ng AVR mo. Kung baga naka-bottleneck yun sa AVR, your system needs more power but the AVR can only output so much. So usually, one is to one yan. If you have a total need of around 800 watts, then you want an AVR with a capacity of 800 watts or more. Punta naman tayo sa UPS or uninterrupted power supply. Ano ba to? Basically, the UPS is like a battery para kung magka-brown out, kukuha yung computer mo ng power dun sa UPS kasi wala na siya makuha dun sa main line or main power line. Do you need UPS? Only if you're working on sensitive data that needs to be saved. For example, college student ka, may requirement ka na paper sa philosophy, 20 pages, single-spaced. At ginagawa mo yung paper mo sa Hegelian Paradynamics of Nietzschean Ethics. Naka 19 pages ka na. Tapos, biglang nagka-brown out. Hindi mo na save. Wala na. GG na rin yun. There's probably no way you're getting that data back. Doon mo talaga mararamdaman yung Nietzschean despair. In that case, maganda sana kung may UPS ka para at the point of brownout, hindi mamamatay computer mo, lilipat siya doon sa UPS, it will draw power from the UPS, and you will have time to save your document and shut down properly. Of course, there are a lot of us na, especially ngayon ng work from home, na very sensitive talaga yung data. Kailangan ma-backup, kailangan ma-save. So, yung mga lawyers nagbagawa ng pleadings, yung mga servers with different files, 
yung mga editors, videos or photos or ang daming mga applications, ang daming mga use cases na kailangan talaga na up to date yung pagka-save nila and yung pagka-backup. For those cases, yes, you really do need a UPS. Pero let's say yung gamit mo sa computer mo, pang streaming, gamer ka. Sinistream mo yung COD, magdamag buong araw, di mo kailangan ng UPS. And even if you had a UPS, kung magka-brown out yan, you wouldn't be able to play for long. Sobrang iksi lang nung capacity ng UPS to power your computer, especially if you're using the computer on load, let's say sa mga graphic intensive games. And we'll get to that later in the video na gana ba katagal yung UPS or how long will it power your system. Personally, I've never used UPS. Tingin ko dagdag castos lang yun for me. I don't have any data that is so crucial na kailangan talaga and ma save in real time. And actually yung Windows, may UPS alternative na siya. Yung tawag sa kanya, Control S. Kahit anong work ginagawa mo sa Windows, Excel, Word, PowerPoint, gamitin mo lang yung Control S every 10 seconds. Ako automatic na yon. Kahit ano ginagawa ko, Control S, Control S. Kahit walang nagbago, kahit nag-iisip lang ako dun sa document, kahit nag-research pa lang ako at wala pa akong nalagay sa Excel file, Control S pa rin ako ng Control S. And yes, yung ibang programs like Word may autosave. Huwag ka maniwala dyan sa autosave na yan. Control S ka lang ng Control S. Sa games, usually may hotkey for quick save. Usually it's F5. Automatic na rin yun sa akin. F5, Control S. Paminsan sa Word, nag F5 ako. Paminsan sa games, nag Control S ako. Para lang talaga ma-save. And so for me, I don't need a UPS. But of course, it's up to the user. Kung sobrang critical talaga ng data niya at kailangan niya ma-save nung maayos. So, let's say, gusto mo nga bumili ng UPS, ano yung kailangan mo malaman? Three things. Number one, what capacity of UPS do you need to get? Usually, yung UPS, rinerate yan in VA, or let's say, 1,000 VA. Tapos, yung industry standard is 60% of the VA is the watt capacity of that UPS. Again, yung VA, hindi yan equal to the watts. So, kung may 1,000 VA yan, that does not equal 1,000 watts yung capacity ng UPS na yun. 60% lang yung watts capacity. So, let's say may 1,000 VA UPS, yung watts capacity nun is around 600 watts. So, again, tally up everything that you will plug into the UPS and adjust accordingly. Number two, how long will it power my stuff? And the honest answer here is nobody knows. Sa totoo lang, sobrang hirap na i-calculate gano ba katagal yung UPS for a given system or for a given appliance because non-linear yung discharge ng battery ng UPS. Non-linear basically means it can jump around a lot. The power capacity and rate of discharge don't correlate evenly. Kung magbago lang konte dun sa power capacity, maari na sobrang laki ng difference dun na sa discharge rate. So it's not like, okay, I have a 600 watt capacity UPS and I have a 600 watt system, and if I'm only using 300 watts because the system is not on load, therefore I can expect it to last one hour. It's very difficult to give estimates like that. Kasi yun nga, non-linear yung pagka-discharge ng UPS battery. But the upside is, you don't really need a lot of time. Yung purpose lang naman talaga ng UPS is para ma-save mo yung current work mo. Nagka-brownout bigla, save mo na yan lahat. Save mo yung file transfer mo, save mo yung Word file mo, and then shut down mo kaagad. The UPS is there just to give you a 2-minute window, 5-minute window to get your PC in order and then to shut it down properly. You don't need it to last for a very long time. Last thing you need to know for UPS is the sine wave. Or basically, when the computer switches to the UPS for power, the UPS generates either a pure sine wave or a simulated sine wave. We go back to the frequency of the power signal. Mas malinis, mas orderly yung signal nung pure sine wave. Yung problema, since mas maganda yung pure sine wave, mas mahal siya. Usually around double the cost yung UPS na pure sine wave kaysa sa dun sa simulated sine wave. And what do we care? Unfortunately, may ibang PSUs na hindi compatible dun sa simulated sine wave. Kailangan sa kanya, pure sine wave. Yung mahirap pa dun, it's not easy to figure out, o itong PSU na to, gagana lang siya sa pure sine wave UPS. Wala to sa usual system specs na linalabas nung PSU manufacturers for their units. Kung sanay ka tumingin sa mga PSU, usually tinitingnan mo yung capacity, yung 80 plus rating, kung fully modular ba siya, kung Japanese capacitors, and things like that. 
But very rarely do you find it listed na, ah, at ito, kung mag-UPS ka, kailangan pure sine wave. So if you're buying a UPS for your computer system and you're not sure at hindi mo ma-research, it's best to go with a UPS na pure sine wave. Kung ma-research mo or ma-testing mo na, ah, gagana naman pala PSU ko dun sa simulated sine wave UPS, then it's recommended to go with that. Yes, the power signal is noisier, but value for money, again, you're not going to be running the computer on the UPS for a very long time. It's just to shut it down. So kung kaya ng simulated sine wave UPS, dun ka na. Mas mura pa. So that's it for AVR and UPS. Do you need an AVR? Sa short term, no. Sa long term, you might want to consider it for added protection. Yung UPS, do you need it? It depends on your use case. Ako personally, I have an AVR, but to be honest, mas ginagamit ko pang power strip na maraming saksakan kaysa sa actual na tingin ko kailangan ko yung extra protection. Yung UPS, I don't have. I feel I don't need it because I have Control S. And to be honest, sumasakit ulo ko sa mga power videos or videos that I make regarding mga power supply or yung mga mains, uh, amplitude, current, watts, and things like that. We do have some other videos like this one about all of the Corsair PSUs or this other video regarding why true rated is just a marketing term. And if you want to learn more about PSUs or power things related to computers, you might want to check those guys out. Thanks for watching.